Joining us now, 2024 presidential candidate, biotech entrepreneur and author of Capitalist Punishment, how Wall Street is using your money to create a country you didn't vote for. Of course, Vivek Ramaswamy. Vivek, great to see you. Uh, I think you might, um, we might describe you as an anti-system candidate. Would you accept that characterization? Wholeheartedly, Steve. That's exactly what I am. It's an outsider that needs to come in and gut that managerial bureaucracy that actually runs the show today. You nailed it in that monologue. And so let's just let's just look at this, the, all the different aspects of it, because every yep. time you poke at one of these pieces or pull on the thread, whatever, whatever analogy you want to use, the, you know, there, there are there are some objections that are always thrown up. So for example, let's look at the donor part of it. So, well, you know, yep. in a free country, people and uh, people who run businesses and own them and so on should be able to make political donations. You don't want to ban that. Um, what's the way through that argument? Well, look, I actually think there's an opportunity for Republicans to become the party that wants to keep big money out of politics, not by changing any laws, but by making that a norm in our party. This used to be a left wing cry to say mm -hmm. they want to keep big money out of politics. Well, if Republicans, even in the primary, say that we don't want super PACs playing a big role, then we go to the better general election. We actually have a bigger hand. But, Steve, I think the bigger problem today is, is the one you put your finger on. There is a waterfall of political accountability. It starts mm -hmm. where we have a three-part system of government, legislative, executive, and judicial in the Constitution. That's not how it works. It delegates that authority to an alphabet soup of the FDA to FTC to SEC to God knows what. But now there's a third move. That waterfall is now kicking down to the private sector's alphabet soup of FB, G-O-O-G, B-L-K, that's BlackRock sticker. That's actually what's happening is we're delegating power, further political power, further and further away from where mm -hmm. the Constitution invested it. And I think that that's what we need to restore. Where, look, I have this dream as a citizen, Steve. It's a radical dream, the same one that our founding fathers had, that the people who we elect to run the government ought to be the ones who actually run the right. government. That isn't the case today. I'm going to come in and fix it. Um, tell us about your book, Vivek, because it's very much connected to all of this, because the, the arguments you've been making, and, and, and especially in this new one, go right to the heart of, of how it's not the people we elect that make the decisions that end up affecting us. Right. I mean, we fought a revolution in this country in 1776 to say that for better or worse, it was the citizens of a nation that determine how to sort out our social and political differences. The old world Europe model was they did it in the back of palace halls. Mm -hmm. Well, what happened today is those palace halls are the back corner office of a BlackRock office on Park Avenue in Manhattan, where government actors are deputizing those ESG fund managers or ESG promoting asset managers to do through the back door what government could have never done through the front door under the Constitution. Climate change agendas, emissions caps, racial equity caps at places like Apple or Home Depot or Chevron, using the money of everyday citizens to do it. That's a betrayal, Steve, of both capitalism and democracy. And I think the right answer is to say that no matter what you think about climate change or racial equity, we should want to sort that out through the political system of course. where every person's voice and vote counts equally. That used to be a left wing cry. I think that can be a calling card for the conservative movement today. Well said. Uh, thank you, Vivek. The book is called Capitalist Punishment. Uh, good luck with that and with your campaign. We'll see you soon. All right. Here with more, the editor at large for The Spectator, Ben Dominich, and the editor in chief of The Federalist, Molly